What's going on everyone and welcome to the channel Nick Corona here and today we're going to be talking about Elon Musk's Starlink. That's right. If you haven't heard of this project, it's his new company basically launching his own satellites into a low earth orbit for super high speed internet primarily in rural areas that obviously have no internet and it has been quite an amazing experience i'm not gonna lie this is gonna be a two-part video i'm gonna cover my first time using it and some of the more basic things in this first video and then the second video i'm gonna do a little bit more uh stress testing so be sure to check that out so to do all of this testing I'm located in Arizona and we did this all in Page. If you're not familiar with Page, it's on Lake Powell and basically Lake Powell is split between Arizona and Utah. We were down in the Arizona side and we are way out. There is no cell phone service out there. Your satellite TV doesn't work, nothing. So it's a great place to test it. And something to note is when you buy this and I, I guess we should get a little bit into how the Starlink works and how you get it and everything. So first of all, right now, unfortunately, you can't just go buy it. It is on beta. So probably three, four months ago, I signed up saying, you know, hey, I have a location at Page where I would really like to have your Starlink. I could beta test it for you. Essentially, they when they accept you, you receive an email and you're then allowed to purchase it for five hundred dollars which it's worth noting it actually cost the company three thousand dollars to produce the starlink everything that you're getting they're selling it at a loss for beta testing so super cool opportunity thank you so much starlink super awesome that you're doing this um, and with that being said it is one of the most exciting pieces of electronics i feel like i have received and gotten to play with in my entire life this has to be the most exciting thing since the invention of the internet itself i mean that's how i felt about it and wait till you guys see this experience it's it's pretty crazy so that $500 essentially gets you the satellite dish itself. It comes with a stand. It has a built-in coaxial cable that comes out of it. It's very long. Um, I can't remember either 50 or 100 feet. And then it has a router that it comes with and um, a power source. Basically everything that you need. The router looks freaking awesome. It's super high quality. I am blown away at the range of it. The whole setup is super basic. You're just supposed to plug it all in and basically it connects. There is a phone app that they do provide where you can see who's connected, change your password, you can kind of see the status of the dish. There's some other cool things you can do, like you can actually put it into a storage mode where the dish will move itself into a position for moving it around and whatnot, so it's not just in some random position, you know, however it was last left. Another thing worth noting is that since Starlink is still in beta, you actually have to select the zone that you're in. They're very large, but then it won't actually work outside of your zone. For example, I actually live in the Phoenix area, and since I selected the zone of Page, the Starlink couldn't connect to a satellite when I while I was in Phoenix. And I do believe that's gonna change. It's a limitation of beta. There are several limitations, um, you know, with beta. So the main way that I'm essentially testing the Starlink is once we're able to get it to connect, I'm just running speed tests to see, you know, where it is as far as you know how good is my connection i'm looking for is it stable does it have longevity how fast is it um you know we'll get into things in our part two of our video um if you're interested to know does it work while you're moving things like that so we're gonna i'm gonna go ahead and try and cover all that feel free to ask questions and things like that below but for now, let's go ahead and jump out to Lake Powell so I can show you guys my first experience and we'll touch base after. All right guys, we can literally see the storm rolling in and this is our first time testing Starlink. It got 250 megabytes per second on the first test. 
and that was on the boat. So now we've moved it to the beach and the storm's rolling in and I'm just trying to bury it so that it can withstand these winds. This is crazy. Out here on Lake Powell and we're gonna find out if this thing works in extreme conditions, I guess, right away. Woo, just getting dumped on. Bury the Starlink. Keep that coaxial out. Maybe not, maybe it won't get wet if I bury it right there. All right. So the legs are under there. She needed a bath anyways. We'll see how it does. Woo! Hey, I'm still trying All right, to ride, Let's but... see if we got internet. All right, guys, this could be the first FaceTime call ever out in the middle of Lake Powell in a no cell phone service area so far into the desert. I doubt anyone's had internet connection here. Our TVs don't even connect. Um, no cell phone service, but we got Starlink. So, let's do it. First of all, it's, it's rainy out, so it's been slowing the connection down a little bit. The clouds do that, but it actually does a decent job at working through it. I'm gonna do a little screen recording here for you guys. I was getting about 150 earlier with clear skies. It looks like right now, even with clouds in the sky, oh my God, 170. Uh, God, this is sickening. I mean, n there's usually just nothing out here. 170. And in the middle of Lake Powell. Look at that. We are out there. Just, just so no one thinks I'm bluffing about the location. We are out there. We are way out there. Starlink is underrated. This is this is amazing. Let's try a FaceTime. They do have to answer for it to work, but it it's doing it. It's ringing. Well, I'll get a call back, and when I get a call back, then it'll be the first FaceTime out here. Amazing. Freaking amazing. So luckily, we got this, the coaxial. We saved her. So the weather didn't mess the Starlink up, but we were running the coaxial through the window on the front and it got wet and so now we're drying it via air conditioner. And then we'll be back to Starlink. And Thank you guys so much for coming along on that adventure. I am completely mind blown just over and over again at how amazing Starlink is. What a game changer. I mean, seriously, normally you have to go way out there and you just no cell phone connection. I get there's people out there who really like their nature time and getting away from that. But for those of us that like to stay connected, this is just an absolute godsend. Speeds of up to 270 megabytes per second out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, that that is what Starlink is made for. That's who it's made for. You could game out there and have a better connection than you do at home. Granted, right now it is in beta testing and there are moments where it can... I, I didn't really experience moments where it completely cut out to like zero and wasn't working. Um, but it did slow down a few times to where it would maybe be 20, 30, 40 megabytes per second and then it would jump back up. And it has a lot to do with right now jumping between dishes and just kind of, you know, where you are with that. I, it's You can completely deal with it. If you're in a FaceTime call or a Zoom call, 
You know, it's like if you're talking for 45 minutes or an hour, you might get dropped once and have to kind of wait three or four minutes to reconnect and then you're good. So I would say once there's more satellites in the air, once everything's worked out, I just saw the announcement that they have these new laser satellites that they're launching something to do with helping the dishes communicate with each other for those switchover moments which i think will probably fix what i was just referring to um but overall the the quality of this starlink is just phenomenal even just watching it rotate and find the dish it just is so cool it looks cool it's very rugged you saw we had it out there in the rain it was getting thrashed with sand and water i mean day one really putting it through the paces and it has been just flawless like no problems and other dishes often run into problems when sand and stuff is blowing into them but this thing has just proved itself to be a marvel um, I just absolutely can't believe it. Can't thank uh, Musk and the Starlink team enough because it, it's just it's it's a mind blowing game changer. Like I said, it has got to be the coolest thing c to come out in my lifetime. I was born in the '90s, really, since you know the internet itself. Like it's just the it feels like the biggest leap to go from nothing out there to like full cell phone service, HD quality streaming. I mean, you know, you watch the TVs struggle and struggle to connect to those dishes and then this technology can do it. I, I don't know. It's mind blowing. I can't wait to see where it's going to go. Um, another thing that I really liked about it is, as you saw, the very long coaxial cable is wonderful. Like even in that situation, we were able to go from the beach into the boat all the way down into the cabin and still have a huge spool of extra cable so it's very long and you know that's that's awesome it is permanently connected to the dish though so that's the only thing that scares me sometimes so like you know be very careful with that cable because if you damage it i you're going to be having to figure out how to replace it i don't really know what the customer service is like as far as if you want to um, you know, get a repair if you damage your unit or something since it's in beta. So that'd be a bummer. I don't want to find out. Um, also, another thing worth noting is it is only, listen to this guy's drum roll, please. It is only a hundred dollars a month. Their service right now is unlimited. So they don't have a data cap. So for a hundred dollars a month, I mean, that's pretty much what I pay at home and it's better than my home internet you know keep in mind it's not really for urban areas and the more people around you using it the worse it is it's that's kind of like why it's for when you're way out there um but wow I wish I could have it at home because it would I would probably use it over what I have if they could just you know get over those little periods where it completely dips down for constant use. If you have Starlink and you have power and you have a clear shot of the sky, you have internet. Um, the only other thing I really would suggest is we found it useful to get a surge protector with a battery backup in it because using a generator, there are just moments sometimes where either, you know, if it's the boat generator and it's clicking on and off or, if it's even just a regular generator and say you run out of gas or just something happens where the power isn't completely steady, we did find that the Starlink would reset itself and that was causing us to have some interruptions. So once we use the surge protector with the backup battery in it, that made it even better. And I mean, that even, who knows how much of the problem that could have been during our testing um, because other, you kind of have to constantly be in the app if you want to see your you know connection status whether or not the dish is connected you know to the satellite um it's it's awesome and for beta it, it's one of the best beta experiences honestly with anything i have ever had you guys have to check out my part two video where i stress test this thing we go ahead and put over 15 people on it we test moving it um, so go ahead and be sure to subscribe and check out part two. My name was Nick Corona. Thank you so much for watching this far. Um, 
if you're interested, you want Starlink, I'm just letting you know it is it is all the hype. It is that great. It is a complete game changer. And yeah, thank you all for watching. Till next time. Peace.